morning and welcome to another Haskell Kata. Today I will take up the voting game Kata again and I will do algebra driven design um, and I will because last times we had such uh, trouble uh, discovering loss I will use quick spec um, a tool that should be able to help discover more laws if you have a, an implementation so let's see how it works uh, quick spec is also uh, described in the book by Sandy McGuire um, algebra driven design and um, well I haven't used it yet uh, I've done a quick test as you can see I have uh, changed the framework and um, uh, I changed the way that the code looks uh, by default and well let's see what happens if we uh, use the laws the laws that we discovered last time we will um, quickly re-implement um, to see what uh, happens and to see whether they are good laws Let's uh, get into it again. So the laws that we had last time were as follows. Um, if we have an empty game, there is a score of zero. If we have zero, there is no score. Uh, if we roll a zero, the score doesn't change. I mean, um, we implemented, we described uh, what happens if you roll a spare or a strike. Uh, we described that a strike is the same as rolling 10 and a spare is the same as rolling something and then completing it to 10. And finally, um, uh, we saw that if we have a new frame and we roll a strike, we're still at a new frame. But I just thought of uh, it doesn't work if we are in the 10th frame because then is a new frame would return uh, false. But let's see what happens if we start implementing. A game which we can roll for which we can construct like we used the game function for that and if we observe the score I'm not sure yet what we will do here I thought we used this for list of frames Let's keep it in there. Um, okay, then we have the game constructor, which just returns a new game. Let's directly implement it. Oops. Um, we had the role constructor, which also added another role to the game. And well, yeah, let's just add those to the previous roles. Um, we should add some, lo some logic in here because now the law won't hold uh, the no frame thing. Um, we roll, but only. If the game, the last roll, the previous roll, is not yet at 10, I guess. And of course, if, it, if it's an empty game, we don't. So we are, will be able to uh, call a new frame on the correct frame. Um, game return an int. Okay, this one doesn't work. But we know it already. No, I'm sorry. Um, no, let's import these constructors. And I will describe how this works. Um, we define some laws for QuickSpec. And uh, QuickSpec will run around and try and combine and generate instances and see which, which uh, equalities do hold and then present us with the laws. Um, we would will at least have to give them, if we give quick spec, well, quick quick spec the functions that we implemented, and we should implement them correctly, of course. Um, but helping us implement it correctly, we can do with normal property test for now. Um, let's see. Wait. Uh, ah yes, uh, we also we have to define an observe instance and observe means um, uh, 
uh, observe uh, defines the observable equality. So if we say uh, two games are the same only uh, if the score are the, uh, the scores are the same, and probably the other observation that we will add for is it a, a new empty frame. Um, so if those two uh, are the same, then the games can be considered the same. And we decided to do this by score first. Um, yeah, observe will also do some tests. The first uh, type here is the input that it will give to your test function. Uh, this is the result that your test function gives uh, that it has to compare. And finally, yeah, the type that you are declaring observable. So uh, in this case, for a game, we don't give extra input to test whether our game is the same. Uh, so this first type is just a uh, unit. And that means there will be not much of a generation because there's only one value for a unit. And it will consider two games equal if the output of this function is equal in all the same inputs. Um, also, we are using quick check now instead of um, a hedgehog, which lets uh, that should generate arbitrary instances. Uh, and arbitrary instances are the uh, like the generators that we used before. So you describe when is there a new arbitrary value for this type? Uh, how can we generate a, a, an arbitrary value for this type? So. Um, we should also use the constructor that we used last time. Um, we generate an arbitrary list of integers. Um, we could say it's only between one and, uh, 0 and 21, but let's quickly do it this way. And then we call wall on it on the new game. These are the roles. So this is uh, equivalent, almost, uh, except for the length uh, restriction, to the uh, gen game function that we used uh, yesterday. And finally, there's the signature. And the signature is the um, stuff that quick spec can work with to juggle around and to see if any combinations of different uh, constructors and values uh, give something that is observably equal to uh, another instance and if that's there are some laws that hold say um, if you have an empty list and you add something and uh, you swap the, uh, you swap the constructor so you, you have something and you add uh, an empty list to it if that something is a list of a variable length it doesn't matter and the, uh, the outcome is e uh, always the same that is discovered as a law by quickspec it's uh, interesting to see it work um, well, we have the constructors that we are allowed to use. So, um, ah, yes, uh, we don't have any uh, generic parameters, so we can leave off the type signatures here. We have role and we have score, which gives us the score and constructs an end. Well, it, it destructs a uh, deconstructs the score uh, at the game to give us an int. And uh, we make it observable. So we declare game is the thing that we need. And there are also some background functions that uh, QuickSpec is able to use, is allowed to use. Uh, stuff that has to do with lists. Uh, there are three uh, constructors or functions that can use, namely uh, empty list, uh, adding something to a list, and appending something to a list, so uh, consing it with an element or uh, combining it with a, another list. And a rith, which knows about the numbers 0, 1, and the function plus. Uh, and this stuff uh, is generated. Quickspec, uh, by calling uh, Quickspec, it displays uh, with a function with print style for quick check. It will use everything in that signature here uh, and write some laws. You can see it down here in the right 
when I save this, if firstly I just remove this. Okay. Uh, ah, yeah, I have an A type variable and it's arbitrary. We have no other prerequisites. Okay. And roll, of course, is not a list of lists of ints, it is just a list of ints. So we should be there. Um, this can be. Ah, yeah, of course, we need to be sure that we do not rename a variable the constructor for the game. And finally, this add null property is uh, empty now. So if we just comment out this stuff for now, and we'll get a lot of warnings for this. I hope it doesn't matter. Ah, it does. Um, that problem if we keep it in here now, remove all redundant imports. So. Um, ah, yeah, we are not testing the quick circuit. Okay, now if we do this, then we don't have the property, so. Um, after having all the tests filled in like this, um, or the code, the, the implementation for the game, uh, QuickSpec outputs the laws that it knows and the functions that it's been given. So these are the things that we give in the background. These are the functions that we uh, defined, what it knows about, about. And after testing something left and right, it generated this, namely the law, if you score any game, the score will be zero. And that is what is found out from the implementation. And yeah, um, yeah, the only observable thing is score, and score is defined as zero in this uh, instance. But if we add some more uh, implementation and find out how to score more uh, games where the, the roles actually matter, um, yeah, the laws generated here will be more interesting. And this is uh, something that you can copy and uh, add to the laws here. And then you can run those to make sure that the laws uh, keep holding if you change the code, if you change the implementation. Yeah. OK, so far so good. Um, that was an explanation for QuickSpec. Uh, there already are 10 minutes in, 12 minutes in, uh, halfway, no. Um, Let's see what we can do by adding the, the laws that we had. If we have a zero game. So let's start by doing this. If we have a game, a new game, and we, if we know the score is zero. So we have a property. Oh. Did it just remove our, yeah, wait, let's see if we can go back. Yeah, okay. Um, for any game, the score is zero. Now we can just say, hey, give us a game. And um, no. score it, it should be zero. Um, we can have this notation instead of the longer for all notation that we have with Hedgehog uh, because we have arbitrary instances and if we say give us something to this property function it will call the arbitrary to generate something. And now we still have, uh, yeah, I think it's now it's easier to remove what we don't use. Um, okay, the first law we passed, but yeah, the score is always zero. Uh, let's add, uh, uh, if we roll a zero, score, uh, score stays the same. So if we have a game, and we can now use the observable equality, because we are not interested in the score itself, but in the equality of the games. If we roll zero for a game, it should be equal and this is the equality observer the we defined the observable equality last time this 
uh, operator uses the observe function. It's a uh, help from quick, quick spec. Yep, it uh, passes role zero. But yeah, of course, we we don't change the score if it's it stays zero. Uh, the S frame strike. So now we have to add a. I'm not sure why I copied it and now I'm typing it in. Um, for any game which is a uh, new frame, if we roll a strike, then the score should be 10 higher. Uh, strike and two rolls. So we have a game and we have roll zero. We are going to define this as a roll type. Make sure that the roll is always between one and 10. <clears throat> and now we say the score for a game um, where we roll 10, roll R0, and roll R1. We make this a new type and deconstruct it. So if we now define the type roll, it can be a constraint to zero. Uh, between 0 and 10. Um, the score should be equal to the score of the original game plus 10 plus twice R0 plus twice R1. That is the law that we had. I'm wondering um, Now we did find an instance arbitrary here. Arbitrary is. Um, let's see how do we generate this. Uh, quick check, gen. Does it have a? Linear or a size? No. Well, we can make it simple and say generate one of maybe this and then add it to quick check. Oh, yeah, of course. We have to add it to the role type. Oh, this is one of the generator. No elements. Elements of the game. Okay. And we now arriving the type. So now we don't need this one. And finally, okay, we have a failing test. <sighs> Roll. We need to uh, do something about strike here. Um, because unless we implement this, we will not have anything uh, interesting in the loss. Mm. So, what do we do? If the previous role is a strike, well, a game with a uh, a game with no rolls is zero. A game with uh, one roll, one frame, well, because we are saving them uh, one frame at a time. It's the sum of everything in that frame. If we have two frames, or at least two frames, so let's say And previous frame. Oh no, the previous frame was a 
spare. So length to be uh, to the sum of the previous frame should be 10. Then our frame counts double. So we say uh, twice the sum of our current frame. No. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Uh, only the, the last roll. So twice. The last roll of this frame. Plus, um, we need to score the rest of the game as if it were simple. A simple game. So we either have a single roll, then it's why is it single roll plus the score of the rest? This is a interesting way to implement this. I'm sure you agree. Um, this is, if we have a previous frame, okay, I have two rolls. Then, still the single roll counts twice, but we also have to count the other roll. And if the previous frame was a single one and was spare, then we also have to check. The frame before that. How much time do we have and why am I doing it this way? I'm not sure. This is way out of scope, uh, way out of property test boundaries. Um, if the length of previous frame is one, so if the previous if the previous frame game was a strike, then we do. It doesn't matter how many rolls there are here. We can just sum it up and double it. Can we? Yeah. Because this is the strike situation. <laughs> but only if the frame after it or before that so the second previous game oh, let's call it the previous previous frame um if the previous previous frame also oops oh i have to rename this Then we have to count the first roll twice as well.
Yeah. Wait, if this was a strike, then we have to... The next two rolls can double, so... In this one, only the first roll counts. So, no, for this one also double. So, we have to double it for this one, and the first roll counts again because of this strike. And then we score the rest. And finally, if that was not the case, wait. So we still have a strike here. Oh, I'm losing it. If the previous frame was a spare, this first roll counts double. If the previous frame is a spare, only the first roll counts double. But still, for the frame, the other roll counts. If the previous roll was a strike, the but the strikes can uh, go two uh, rolls. If the previous previous frame was a strike, and the previous frame was a strike, then. If we have a first roll, this one counts uh, double because of this previous previous frame, and the, the whole frame counts double because of the previous uh, frame. If this wasn't, then only the f this is this doesn't affect anything, so we just have twice the frame. Okay. Finally. Uh, the same but with a single roll so we have the same rules but with a frame with only a single roll so we can just take a frame here so this is a strike this is a strike so this counts double twice Well, yeah, let's do it this way. There is no sum frame, it's just this frame. And if this wasn't, it's just twice this frame. Okay, so which don't did we have? The normal situation, namely any other game where there is no strikes or spares before that are uh, of any concern so we have a frame which may have one or more rules oh. and that means that we just sum of the frame and we score the rest Hmm. Now we have a law. <sighs> we have a law that if the game, uh, we have an empty game, it should be zero. Ah, but we didn't generate an empty game. We are not generating an empty game here. So the game, of, the score of any game is, <sighs> okay, this does make sense. Uh, by the way, we have to 
generate rules here. And that means that we have to, uh, yeah, coerce them back into it. So now uh, we won't roll any minus one. Um, yeah, we have to have an empty game here because this is not a good test and that means it is not a property test. But hey, no matter if we score a game, it should be zero. No, this one should work, yeah. But is new frame strike failed? What that means, that is just because we didn't create a frameless a game with no frames. So if we uh, create an empty frame game so an empty frame game um, it's almost the same as a game but it's a new type and let's also let's write no type to show and empty frame game is a game which only rolls frames uh, of 10 or two numbers that may or may not sum up to 10 but at maximum 10 Yeah, so we have the same here. Um, ah, we are already more than half an hour in. We have some rolls, but let's just have some a list of. elements and the elements that we can choose from are let's say a 10 or a 1 and a 9 or a 0 and a 0 the rolls don't have to be first okay does that work oh yeah we have to um, empty frame game oh wait um okay Ah, we have to compare the rules. I think. Oh man. What's happening now? What am I missing and why am I doing it this way again? Yeah, here we need to be sure that we have the game itself to get back. Okay. And here we need to make sure that oh it seems to be able it seems to generate a list of this if we have a list of random length of one of the elements so we have a list of rules and we concatenate them <sighs> there is no generation in here okay So let's say why does this fail, and then we yeah, then we end this um, already overly long uh, kata 
demonstration thing. Um, if the game is empty and we roll a three and a two after the strike, yeah, we didn't uh, combine these because the three and a two are not combined. We add pins to the rolls. An empty list. We do it like this. If there are already some rolls and if the last frame is two, then we just add it uh, in front. So we will prepend it. If the length of the last frame is not two, um, which means that it's only a single one we can add it. Or wait, if the uh, some of the last frame is ten, and otherwise we have to add the roll to the last frame because we take the last frame and we take we make a list of it. And we take some of the last frame minus pins, so we can already roll the remaining and uh, what was already there, and the rest will be added there. And it doesn't work either. Zero doesn't change the score. Oh, I'm... Oh, let's still fix this. It's 40 minutes in already, almost. Um, if we have a game of five, which is a stupid game. Oh no, five is the last roll. If we roll the zero and the six, and now I have a five. If we add a zero, the score should still be 11, but we get out 16. Why? Ah, uh, because this is, no, 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 no. The maximum of those two. No, the minimum of those two. Because um, we won't always make it as fair. Okay. Finally, we only have the new frame strike law. If we have an empty game and we roll a two and a three after the strike, we should have 20. Yeah, we should have 20 because we have a strike and then the two next count double. So we have 10 plus the, the whole frame double. It's 50, it's 20. It only counts as 11. Why would it only count as 11? We roll a 10, we add a 10. Then we roll a two and a three and... We either roll 
the pins or if yeah this should be better now this is interesting trying to roll two eights and that means that we have a strike and two eights and both eights count double even if they are it's it's impossible to it's it's an eight and a two so it will be clamped so it's a ten it's it, 20 is the correct score here and not both eights count double because it's impossible to throw two eights in a row uh okay well that's really that's really 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 enough for now i don't think you will watch to the end if you did thank you so much for the support um um i will need to go and change this format uh, because uh, if people are watching this they will probably mostly i think i think it's uh, hard to be engaged with uh something like this if you if you are into this uh like watching uh, watching someone program and uh think and uh, it helps you think as well yeah of course but i want to, uh, to have more opportunities to uh, demonstrate stuff that works on my channel so i'm thinking of um starting at least starting to add more um, complete videos uh, that do something uh, that demonstrate something that have a clear structure um so i might need to split this channel somehow um i know i only just started so uh, let me know if you have any uh, opinion on this uh, I, I will still try to do my katas well i obviously will do my katas but i will also have a place where uh, where i do demonstrate stuff that works that i prepared beforehand so i can give an explanation which is uh, probably more interesting for people who are uh, new to haskell new to uh algebra driven design or want to see a kata and want to see how it works out so um i would either put them in, in a new playlist or uh, even a new channel so that uh, people can find uh, can see the difference between uh, videos that will not lead anywhere or i should put up big warnings uh, in every description or and uh, videos that uh, do have some demonstration have some value uh, that leads to a conclusion which is at least more satisfying than what we did today um let me know if you have any opinions on this uh, also of course as always uh, thank you for watching thank you for um holding on uh, let me know if you have any suggestions as uh, for other katas that you would like to see other methods to, you would like to see implemented uh or demonstrated or tested out and um, of course if you liked it uh, let me know by leaving a like in the video so um uh, that will be uh, uh, motivating. Uh, thank you again for watching, and I see you in the next video.